Hi, today I'm going to have a look at Scrivener for Windows and uh, I'm basically going to go through the publishing process I use to get a, a nice PDF document out of Scrivener into Word, then out of Word and into a PDF file ready to sell. So as you can see, this is my book. I have actually released this on Amazon Kindle. It's called Teach Yourself Game Programming for Android and Windows. And as you can see, it's quite a complicated document. It's got a lot of lot, lots and lots of uh, chapters and subchapters and subsections. And uh, this is the kind of thing that Scrivener really hates when it comes to outputting your book um, directly from Scrivener into um, an EPUB, Mobi or or PDF file because I need a table of contents. I can't publish a book like this um, as a straightforward read. It would be fine for a novel, but uh, for a non-fiction book like this with this many subsections, I need a table of contents because apart from anything else, my readers are going to be using this book as much as a reference book as they will be reading it from beginning to end. So, with that out of the way, uh, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to start by clicking on File and Compile, and I'm going to take you through the settings I've set up. Now, I'll be exporting to a Word document. It does have the ability to export to uh, Mobi, EPUB, and PDF directly from the application, but again, the biggest issue is the lack of um, a linkable table of contents that is a, a series of html links that link within the document internally and take you to the right place I, I could just output it as a draft document and that's really what scrivener is designed for is to produce um, a drafting document um, to send off to your publisher or a manuscript to send off uh, for review rather than um, outputting to a final product so for that you really need to go through word and this will basically um, make things a little bit easier for you. Otherwise, there'll be a lot of work. Um, you'll have to sort of do everything manually, and that takes quite a long time. Um, so uh, just going through the contents. First of all, I'm selecting what I include here. I've got two versions of the book, um, one with a standard copyright license and one with a special license. Um, as is will basically mean that uh, it will just appear as is. It won't be titled or anything like that. Um, page break. Uh, we'll put a page break um, before each of these sections of text and, and that will produce a nicely formatted document you won't just lump everything together and uh, I've basically gone through this and uh, I've, I've put a tick for page break in front of all my major sections so primer will have a page break um, uh, installation ID will have a page break phase one will have a page break introduction will have a page break etc etc and of course title copyright and acknowledgements will have a page break so they each exist within um, an individual page. Uh, then I went to formatting. Now I'm not actually using folders here so I don't actually need to adjust anything for these folders but as you can see you've got um, uh, if you use folders and you'll need to assign um, the formatting to these as well because I don't I'm basically going to skip ahead of this and just go down to these two layers here now, as you can see I've got layer one two three and four and that directly correlates to these here so I've got these are all layer one then I've got um, a level two document and as I expand out it'll go level three and level four and I don't go beyond four levels um, but it does give you an option for four plus so uh, what I've done here is, as you can see, I've put a squiggly line, hash, squiggly line, space in front of each of my titles. And now when I go up to level 2, I put in two hashes, level 3, three hashes, uh, level 4, four hashes. Now this is for processing within Word. I have uh, got a macro that basically searches through the document and replaces anything in that document um, that has this symbol with a specific style. This is one of the biggest things that lacks with um, Scrivener when you're outputting um, for the purposes of publishing is the lack of style support. Styles, um, heading 1, heading 2, heading 3, heading 4 is basically the backbone of generating table of contents. Um, Scrivener doesn't do that under any circumstances or if it does I haven't found out a way of doing it so that is going to be processed within word itself um, as you can see I've just gone through and I've formatted these as identically uh, they're identically formatted to the first one as well um, so both of these layers you can see I've got some double documents there and I've got some single documents there and that basically takes care of all that um, if I 
modify them uh, basically I do that by clicking on modify um, in order to insert the symbol I clicked on selection layout I put a prefix prefix value there uh, and that was it um, that put the symbol in automatically and of course you can just format the text directly um, with uh, sort of font sizes and spacing and all that kind of stuff here um, you can just create more just by clicking on more and that will give you indentations and I'll, I'll show you more about that in a moment but there's my basic uh, first level title. Now for the second level title I'm actually going to have paragraphs there. So um, I need to adjust the paragraphs. Now I've opted. Uh, you can do it simply by um, clicking on some of these standard ones. This will give you one line, one and a half line, two line, three line. Fantastic for um, drafting but again I'm looking to publish rather than draft so I've created my own custom style with more I basically removed the first line inches to zero um, I put spacing of six pixels above and six pixels below and that means uh, the the, uh, the paragraphs after the um, uh, the, the titles won't be just jammed together and uh, it will also allow me to remove the um, the whole tab on first line business uh, which I don't really want for a non-fiction document so then once that has been done I then proceed to do basically the same for everything else so modify again same thing um, single line six pixels above six pixels below and again hashtag and I don't know why I'm saying hashtag um, uh, as you see, the hash and the, the squiggly lines have been inserted in here. Now, uh, this is a part of the numbering system. So as you can see, it's part of the title. You've got 1.2.3. Um, that's basically represented with um, a dollar sign, H and N, and then a couple of, uh, of uh, gr well, less than and then greater than symbol, and it ends in a full stop. And uh, and that's basically that. As you can see, the full stop doesn't actually, oh yeah, sorry, the full stop does show, it shows after the, uh, the what's we call it? Uh, yeah, so uh, you've got the symbol, then you've got full stop, so it'll end up uh, with one, two, three, dot. Um, if I remove the full stop, then it would be just one, two, three. Um, so that's basically all I'm going to do for the formatting. You can again, uh, I think you can change fonts here. Uh, well, you certainly change colours and things. You can basically play around with it, see, see what you get and what's going on. Um, So yeah, so you can change fonts, you just click on the um, A button there and you can select all your fonts and styles there. So you've got everything you need to actually get the... Um, I, I hesitate to call them styles, it is a style, but it's not marked as styles um, in the document internally. So it's, it's a stylization of the document and it's... Uh, I'll just call it what it is, it's formatting of the text. Um, then you've got transformations. Now, uh, when I first exported my book, because a lot of my programming um, was in italics, I was quite confused because it was actually underlining them. So uh, th that's the rich text conversions here. If you're having similar problems, just remove the tick from the convert italics to underlines, um, which again is a drafting thing, but I want to go to publish, so uh, I don't need that. So you basically just adjust these options until you have what you need. I don't need to do any replacements. Um, footnotes and that I don't want to worry about those and uh, the next major thing here is uh, you've got the header this will basically put uh, teach yourself programming for Android and Windows at the top here now I'm actually going to let Word handle the paging because I'm going to be inserting a table of contents um, I don't know how long that's going to be how many pages is going to take up so there's no point in having this thing um, actually edit the uh, um, the uh, <laughs> the, the, the page numbers itself so I'm going to get rid of that now normally the header would appear up here um, so if you've got uh, um, less than dollar sign P greater than then that's the page number so as you can see I've just assigned the header as teach yourself game programming for Android and Windows and that's basically it so that's my formatting and all my options set up um, you can also set paper size and all that kind of stuff and I've just set it to letter and uh, what I'm now going to do is compile it and just jump into tutorial very quickly and I'm going to compile it there so I'm just going to call this well teach yourself game programming for Android and Windows and then I'm going to click on save and that will compile my 
my uh, doc. As I say, you do have the options again for PDF and uh, and all that kind of stuff. So if you're just doing a basic um, novel without um, any detailed table of contents required, then uh, you certainly don't need to do it this way. But because I'm doing a non-fiction thing with many, many layers, um, it's the sort of thing I need to worry about is a detailed ta table of contents. So as you see, that's now been um, compiled. So um, if I go into my folder, there's my document, and all I'm going to do now is, my, my, my part with Scrivener is basically done now, so I'm just going to open up the file in Word. I'm using the latest 2003, sorry, 2003, <laughs> 2013, I mean, uh, version of Word. Uh, this should work with 2007, 2010. Uh, I'm not sure about 3 and, uh, and, and below that. So, um, but as you can see, the document is there, and it's loaded, and everything has, has appeared. And uh, and as you see, you've got these hashtags. I don't know why I keep saying hashtags. They're not hashtags. They're, they're squiggle hashes, I should call them. So I'm going to call them squiggle hashes from now on. So it's got these squiggle hashes. And uh, and you've got the numbering and all that kind of stuff. So that's all lovely uh, set up for us. But of course, we don't want to see this when we get our final document. And we need to organize a table of contents. Now to do this, I'm using a macro. So if I click on View and I click on Macros and uh, we'll edit the macro just to show you what's going on and this is the code for the macro so you can basically pause the video there and type it all out yourself uh, it's quite a short one so it won't take you too long and all this is doing is basically matching this block of text here and setting um, a style here now I'll show you why I need to do that uh, if I go here yeah so we'll pull it oh pushing a page break if I can remember how <laughs> uh, page break these ribbons uh, things always confuse me um, so if I go back there and then go to references and table of contents and generate table of content and now as you can see table of contents can't be generated simply because there's, there's nothing to base the data on and now the way the data works within word is you basically click on the title you go home you click on heading one uh, it will change the font slightly you can edit the um, the styles yourselves um, to match the document if you want to or you can just leave them as is um, but once i create a heading if i just say an update as you can see, it's then updated um, to include the additional headings. Uh, so that's what we basically need to do is, is set um, heading 1, 2, 3 and 4 um, to the document. So I'm just going to get rid of this. And put another page break in there. So there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my macro. And you can, you can create this macro simply by going to View, uh, Macros, um, then click on Create. And it will basically take you to this screen here, uh, which is a little word processor, uh, a little IDE for word um, programming. And this is all written in Visual C. And uh, as again, you can copy it out. Just pause the video, copy it out. And then all you need to do is um, highlight, is type in the text you want to select there, and then type in a style heading. So I want style heading 1 for the um, one hash level. And all I do then is click on play. And then I put in another hash. Change this to 2. And then I click on run. And another hash. And go to two and run. That's a, quite a big one. And another hash and four and run. And that's it. So if I go back to my document here and scroll down, as you can see, we now have uh, all, all the all the text has changed. So we've not, now got a level. Um, two heading there, level three, and it's all populated within the navigation window as well. So uh, we've got a level um, three there, and that'll be a level four around here somewhere. I think that's one. So again, heading level four there, and you can even go five, six. You can go as high or as low as you like. Um, but that's basically that. So what I now need to do, of course, is uh, go all the way back to the beginning. Um, we need to do a search and replace um, to get rid of these uh, tags. So if I click on replace and type in squiggle 
um, hash squiggle and there's also a space before um, this this is automatically inserted in um, the way we organized it I actually left a space in the, in the formatting within Scrivener so a space has appeared here as well and then all I do is I click on replace all don't need to fill in um, replace with or anything like that and that just gets rid of it all um, Then another hash and replace all so 24 replacements there another hash replace all 24 replacements, well 99 there, it's quite a lot there isn't it? And replace here and another 61 replacements. And that's basically it, so we can get rid of that extra dot there. And if I go to my table of content here, or the page where it should reside, and again references, table of contents, we'll generate a table of contents let Word do its thing, and there we go. So we now have um, a book with 651 pages with uh, over 200 separate headings, and I've done it in a matter of minutes. And I'm sure you can imagine the pain of going through every single section manually and, and, and assigning um, a different heading. And again, if I did that, it also introduced possible errors, like I might put a heading 2 where it shouldn't be, or, or a level 3 where it shouldn't be, or I might call a primer a level 4. And basically, it has the potential of messing up the whole document. And that's it then. Um, so all I really need to do now is uh, generate some page numbers. As you see, page numbers have been generated here. Um, but all I need to do is generate some more. <clears throat> so I believe that's insert uh, and page number. So there we go. And then all I've got to do is go to bottom of page and give it a nice um, center page number. And now all my page numbers are created. And of course I can stylize the heading as well. So I'm going to insert and uh, header. And I can create a nice style. Wasn't really the style I was looking for, so try again. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what we pick, so that one would do. And uh, as you can see, that will now um, list the. Uh, so just making sure I'm talking right here. No, it just uh, picks up the first name of the chapter, doesn't? It? Oh no, sorry. So this actually uh, fa uh, lists the. Um, um, yeah, so it lists the actual section you're in, so that's quite useful. So we just leave it at that, and it's got a nice page number there as well. So I quite like that. So I just leave it there, and I can just get rid of this page number, and that will do. And there we go. So now my document's formatted. It's looking a little bit more professional than it was before. Again, I can change um, uh, to styles and fonts and that kind of stuff in Scrivener, so you don't have to have um, this curry in you. But I quite like it because it's quite easy to read on e-devices. Um, so I've just gone with it. And the headings aren't too out of place, so I'll just leave those as they are. And then all I really need to do is go to File and then um, Save As and click on Browse. And just give it a nice PDF file name. And you can adjust all the options as you need. And let it save. I'll give it a couple of moments. It's quite a large document. Any time today. There's bigger documents. A lot of images and stuff in my file. Um, and there we go. So it's now booted into the e-reader and I've now got my document. And more importantly, I've got a linkable professional table of content. So I now have um, all of that. And of course, I'll do a quick check. Uh, primer is um, 388 so I'm just going to click on mobile primer uh, 388 so that's fine and I now have a nice professional looking document um, ready to sell on the internet. <laughs>